So I guess my first question to you is, how is it you could sort of fight each other so much and still cooperate? What's the secret? Well, I'll tell you that, although the first observation I would make is that it, actually that's pretty rich coming from Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> As the reason for my falling out with Gordon Brown was over him. <laughs> and the reason it was over him is because I allegedly backed Tony Blair rather than Gordon Brown for the Labour leadership in 1994, and Gordon and his supporters uh, did not uh, forgive or forget until, of course, at that moment, following the Singapore Formula One race, um, <laughs> Gordon Brown asked me to come back, to join his government and come back from my very, very enjoyable self-imposed exile in Brussels. But let me make just a, a wider point to you, because it really matters. Unlike a business where you have a board of directors, chairman, who appoint and hire a chief executive, a CEO, whose mandate is to get on and deliver the goods, and he employs managers and staff who have to take his orders, and if they don't, they're paid off or fired. In politics, it's different. In politics, you're not hired or fired, you're elected. And when you're elected, you represent a point of view or a group of people or a school of thought in your party. And politics becomes about negotiation. And it's sometimes messy, it sometimes breaks down, and sometimes you find individuals putting their interests before the collective whole of the, of the government in question. Now, did that happen in our case? Yes, up to a point, it did. You had two guys at the top of the government, uh, Blair and Brown, one the CEO and the other sort of finance director, um, who had slightly different views, not on all things, but on some things, policy issues. For example, reform of public services, how the state uh, should change, how individuals should be empowered. These were not fundamental differences. They were capable of being embraced within the same party and government. Nonetheless, uh, they were competing points of view. Towards the end, I would say that the policy differences did get quite strong, and they outweighed what the two of those very, very fine politicians and ministers agreed on. But for the bulk of our time in government, that wasn't the case. For the bulk of our time in government, we did agree. We had a common agenda. We pursued uh, agreed objectives. And in the main, I would say 80% plus, we delivered. That 20% that we didn't, in my view, was a casualty of politicians not being able to get on sufficiently and cooperate strongly enough. Thank you, Lord Mandelson. Uh, I'm an economist. During the period pre-crisis of New Labour, uh, the government actually presided over a period of very strong economic growth, which economists usually expect fiscal deficits to go down, uh, but fiscal deficits went up. So Britain ended up going into a crisis where, of course, they had to spend a lot more money to rescue banks with an exceedingly high deficit position. The Conservative Party has accused New Labour of being fiscally irresponsible, quote, uh, I'd like you to comment on whether you believe that was correct. And in the same vein, comment on the current uh, Cameron Clegg government's very aggressive cuts to government deficit, including uh, the latest announcement they'll take British defence spend down to about the level of uh, Spain or Italy. I think the, the new government's criticism and judgment of us is harsh. I think it's unfair. You would expect me to say that. But, you know, our deficit, which was not by any means uh, uh, the uh, uh, worst amongst the G7, uh, we were sort of in the middle there, um, could have been handled and tidied over, rolled over, if uh, at the time uh, growth had continued at the rate we were experiencing. But a dirty great hole was blown in our GDP. Uh, growth was not sideways. We were unable therefore, uh, to sustain uh, that level of spending uh, and borrowing. Well, hindsight's a great thing. 
Um, and that's why I say, although I think that we should probably, by 2006, 2007, uh, been busy identifying where public expenditure savings, alternatives, higher productivity means of delivering the same um, level or quality of public services. All this is work that actually should have been carried on and was to an extent, but not sufficiently in the British government uh, at that, 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 that time. I don't think that gives sufficient sort of basis for you know, condemnation uh, as the present government are trying to uh, uh, argue uh, of our entire fiscal record during 13 years uh, in government. Um, I think they have to be careful. Careful that they don't stall our economic recovery by slamming on the brakes too sharply and prematurely. And that secondly, they don't leave our public services in a position where we have in later years to spend so much more and invest so much more in order to catch up uh, with... Uh, the uh, uh, the cuts that would have occurred uh, in the meantime.